going on with the governmental and uh, military list of uh, categories, uh, divisions of uh, controls and safeguards, and uh, what we uh, what we want out of our various security tools and how to identify the various security tools and how to identify various security tools that we're missing, which we'll come to. Um, anyways, uh, preventive controls. Um, now, th this is going to be probably the one that you will think of populating uh, first in, in terms of uh, examples of uh, types of controls that are preventive. I mean, you know, walls are preventive for access. Access control systems in general are preventive in terms of uh, identifying um, uh, who should and should not be uh, given access to uh, our systems. Um, and so, you know, any number of, of controls, and, and these are controls that um, we are going to, you know, it's, it's going to be easy to identify in the same way that when we're talking about administrative, technical, and physical controls, uh, it was easy to identify the technical controls that were the ones we think of first. Uh, so, yeah, uh, preventive is going to be the bulk of what we are uh, dealing with in return in in terms of uh, what we are uh, using to secure uh, our systems to control uh, access management uh, policies adherence everything uh, you know, the preventive controls are, are uh, the ones that we think of. And this is, this is where our uh, reputation for being the Knights Who Say No uh, comes in. That, you know, security is, is the preventer of production. So uh, you've got to be somewhat more careful when you are dealing with these, you know, are, is this preventing risk or is it in fact pre preventing production and and so you know we need to uh, be careful with our preventive controls we need to be aware of you know how strict we need to make them um, the uh, gradations uh, the uh, fineness of discrimination that the the systems can make in in terms of identifying um, users, access, activities, functions, whatever. Um, so this is the area of controls and tools and safeguards and countermeasures that we have to pay the most attention to in terms of how do we implement it? Um, what are the settings? Uh, what are the most appropriate settings? What is the optimal use of, of this particular control? So don't get, just go hog wild with preventive controls. You have to determine, you know, is this needed? Is this necessary? Is, uh, and, and when we implement it, how much is necessary? So paying attention to that. And uh, finally, on the government military list is, is recovery controls. So... Um, Again, going to be some similarities here with compensating and uh, uh, corrective controls. What uh, do we have in terms of the controls um, that can help us to recover? That when something untoward happens, are you know kind of automatically corrective, automatically uh, compensating, automatically putting us in a better position to recover, to come back to normal operation. So, uh, again, going through the list, we've got our compensating 
corrective, detective, deterrent, directive, preventive, and recovery controls. Now, as previously mentioned, I mean, we, we've gone over the uh, controls, um, uh, the administrative, uh, technical, and, and physical controls, and, and that list, and now they, you know, that more business-oriented list, and now the, the government military list. And um, again, these are not, you know, one does not fit into the other. And uh, when I first started teaching this, in order to uh, teach this principle that uh, they they are orthogonal, they they are not, um, uh, you know, one one doesn't fit in to another. You can't say that uh, preventive controls are all technical controls or whatever, um, you know, that um, I made up the controls matrix. And this is using the two, you know, having on the one side uh, the uh, administrative technical and physical rows in a table and across the top are compensating corrective detective deterrent directive preventive recovery controls as as columns in the grid and then I would have uh, the students uh, populate the grid with different examples of what was for example a technical preventive control and I, I, as I was doing that, I realized that this was not just simply a teaching tool, but that you could use this in uh, any um, system that you were implementing, that you were deciding on the uh, appropriate levels of controls and the, the security tools that were necessary to it, and identifying um, are there any areas that are missing? And particularly not just, you know, when you have a, a hole in the, the matrix itself, but if you are missing a row or a column, do you have a blind spot in terms of your approach to securing this particular system? Do you need to, you know, either identify, no, we do not need uh, those types of controls for this particular system, or, uh, yes, we've missed out. We need to implement some tools in, in those areas. Uh, and so the controls matrix is itself a security breakdown framework that allows you to identify for any particular system what are the controls that you do have in place and, in particular, what are the controls that you don't have in place? Things that you may need to uh, implement uh, in order to have more complete protection for your systems.